Hello everyone, thanks for taking a look at this video. Today I will be talking about how to get the most FPS possible out of a Ryzen 5000 series CPU. I have received many comments from viewers asking how I achieve the FPS performance in my videos, so I thought it would be helpful to share everything I can about how my setup is configured and optimized to get every bit of performance possible. For most of my videos, I run an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. It is a great gaming processor, and it is only really meaningfully surpassed by the 5800X 3D and the new 7000 series CPUs. Before I get into the actual settings I use, I need to talk about what Precision Boost Overdrive is and the way it works. PBO is AMD's auto overclocking algorithm that allows the CPU to dynamically overclock itself beyond AMD's stated base clock frequency. So in the case of the 5600X, it has a guaranteed minimum base clock speed of 3.7 gigahertz. Now, based on a few factors, the PBO algorithm can push the clock speeds higher. AMD states that the 5600X may boost up to 4.6 gigahertz on a single core under the right conditions. The optimal conditions are a critical variable in the algorithm. The two big ones that we can influence are power and temperature. So starting with power, more is better. You need a power supply that can provide plenty of clean and reliable power. The rule of thumb is to have a power supply from a trustworthy brand that can provide about twice the wattage that your components will typically use under a gaming load. Additionally, you need a motherboard that has decent enough power delivery to the CPU. So I have an EVGA 750 watt power supply and an ASUS TUF B450 motherboard. With my daily driver RTX 3060 Ti, the system wattage under load is estimated to be about 375 watts, so right in the middle wattage sweet spot that ensures it runs as efficiently as possible while having room to handle sudden power usage increases and the additional stress of overclocking components. So now that the power needs are accounted for, we can chat about temperature. Basically for temperature, cooler is better. The first consideration is your case. I strongly suggest a case with mesh in the front panel for good intake, mesh on the top for proper exhaust, and a bottom mesh intake for the power supply. You will also want decent quality fans. I have a 240 millimeter liquid all-in-one CPU cooler. This means it uses two 120 millimeter fans to pull air through a radiator with coolant in it. The cooled liquid is then pumped over the CPU to provide very effective cooling especially for a part like the 5600X that does not actually generate an excessive amount of heat. I have my radiator and fans mounted to the front of my case, pulling in air through the front mesh because I don't have room for it at the top of the case. I also have a 120 millimeter fan at the back of my case for exhaust and a 120 millimeter fan mounted on top of the power supply basement that forces some air up into my graphics cards cooler. This strong cooling setup keeps the temps low enough for PBO to do its best work. As an added bonus, this all helps with reducing GPU temps as well. Real quick, if you are finding this video useful or entertaining, please consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos about PC gaming and getting the most out of your system. Now we'll talk about the settings. I personally start with turning all my fans up to full speed. This also runs the pump in the liquid cooler at max as it bases its running speed on the data it gets from the fan header on the motherboard it is connected to. With my setup, I have good quality fans that are not very loud, even at full speed. I generally recommend turning up your fans as high as you can while still being able to tolerate the noise level. So now with the fans turned up, we are going to do everything we can possibly do to keep temps in our system as low as possible. Now we can look at optimizing the PBO settings. Quick side rant, there is a tool called Ryzen Master that you can use to tweak settings in Windows, but I find it really frustrating to use and genuinely feel that tweaking the settings in the motherboard BIOS is actually better and easier for most people. So that's what I will be showing today. The BIOS layout will vary between motherboard manufacturers, but the name of these settings should be pretty consistent so you know what to look for. First is the Precision Boost Overdrive dropdown. This lets you enable PBO and to pick which level you want to use. This is where we choose advanced, so we can have access to all the other PBO settings we want to work with. PBO limits let you choose if you want to stick with AMD's default limits for power or if you want to go with more aggressive limits determined by the motherboard manufacturer. Here I go with the motherboard to let it push the CPU a bit harder. CPU boost override allows you to specify if the motherboard can push the clock speeds of the CPU higher than AMD's advertised boost frequency. You set this to enabled positive, 
and then I turn max CPU boost override up as high as it will go. This setting goes up in increments of 25 megahertz. I am confident that I have the cooling and power necessary to support the maximum potential speeds. Platform thermal throttle limit allows you to choose the maximum temp the CPU can reach before the motherboard will dial back performance to keep it at or below that specific temp. This could be particularly useful if your CPU cooler is not as strong and you are worried about letting the temps get too high. I have this set to 84C, but I don't think it ever gets close to that with the liquid cooling. 84 should be fine if you have a less capable cooler. I purposely skipped over Curve Optimizer and am returning to it as it needs a little bit more explanation than the other options and has a critical impact on heat. Curve Optimizer is referring to the voltage curve the CPU uses as it ramps up the clock speeds. As the clocks increase, the voltage needed to sustain those clocks also increases. This setting provides a simplified way to reduce the voltage across the board and in turn will reduce the heat output. As I mentioned before, the less heat the better, and it will allow the CPU to boost higher and for longer periods. It's essentially a smart undervolt of the CPU. It will vary in its effectiveness based on your individual CPU and how high of quality the silicon is based on luck of the draw. CPUs of the same model may do better or worse here. Mine was purchased almost immediately after the 5000 series was launched, so the manufacturing process wasn't as mature yet, and I suspect 5600s and 5600Xs that were manufactured later might do even better than my sample. You set the curve optimizer to all cores, then set the all core optimizer sign to negative. The all core optimizer magnitude setting is where you have to go through some trial and error. Essentially, the higher the value in this field, the more aggressive it will be in reducing voltage. This means you want to get this number as high as possible without causing system instability. I would suggest starting at 10. After that, you can run a CPU benchmark such as Cinebench R23 to quickly determine if it's relatively stable. If it is, play some of your favorite games and make sure you don't get any odd crashes. If you don't, come back and raise the magnitude one level at a time and retest until you encounter instability, and then go back to the last highest value that was stable. I settled out at 13, but have heard of folks who have managed to max out at 30. Lastly, on settings, make sure you have activated your RAM overclocking. For AMD, you want to look for the DOCP setting, and the dropdown will contain one or two certified overclock settings that were preloaded into the RAM by the manufacturer. So now, you can see that these settings allow single cores on the 5600X to boost up to 4850 MHz. This is particularly useful for gaming, as games still often lean on one or just a few cores heavily. This can improve frame rates by keeping the CPU from becoming a bottleneck to the GPU, or at least making it a bottleneck less often. I hope this video encourages you to get into your BIOS and experiment with the Precision Boost Overdrive settings. For those worried about damaging something, I can tell you that tinkering with these settings carries much less risk than older methods of overclocking. If you by some chance get into a tricky situation where the PC will not boot, just disconnect the power cable and then take out the circular battery on the motherboard, and this will reset all settings back to their defaults. If you have any other questions about PBO, please feel free to drop a comment. I'll do my best to respond or make a follow-up video if necessary. I really appreciate you watching this video, and if you've made it this far, please consider clicking the like button to get it out there to more people. I hope to see you in the next one.